Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your reading. This is Bear Food Mama Intuitive Reading. And this is your reading for the week ahead. How many times can I say reading? <laughs> if you want a free reading, just put free reading in the comments below. Those two words only, it's how I search for them. So um, I'll announce the winner on 6-6 six, six for that drawing. You can also donate via my cash app. Um, you can purchase a uh, personal with me on Etsy. And I changed the Patreon membership, so it's just $5.55 a month. Um, and you get access to any of the free readings or content I post there. Sometimes it's rituals, sometimes it's just little like sayings, but primarily it's a free, it's a reading, a spiritually uh, focused reading once or twice um, a month, sometimes more. Anyway, thanks for being here. Let's get started. a big sound. As I was shuffling the cards for your energy, um, just meditating on it, the Queen of Wands came out with Temperance Reverse and then the Ten of Pentacles as well. And it seemed like a good, like auspicious omen. I'm being drawn to put this little resurrection stone here. This is called a Phoenix um, stone. It's really pretty. So there you are. Spirit, please protect this reading. Send any negative energy back to sender. Transmuted tenfold for the greatest good of all and harm to none. Archangel Michael, please bring clear, concise messages through in this reading. And Mother Mary, please bring compassion through in these messages. Amen. Amen. So let it be. I'm also being drawn to call upon Kali. Please bring compassion in cutting the cords, severing the ties to the past, the, th the threads that bind us to what no longer serves, help us weave the loom of our lives with conscientious intention, is what I'm hearing. Okay, amen. Thank you. The Knight of Swords reverse at the heart of your energy, Six of Wands reverse, Seven of Pentacles reverse, King of Cups, Knight of Wands. A. In the past, things that you've been putting your energy into, specifically like materially or in the 3D, have not been panning out. Especially if you've been working with manifestation, I'm hearing it's because you've been overthinking. Like, you know, the there's a saying like where attention goes or where where attention goes, energy flows, and it like creates that flow of manifestation. But also when you're focusing on what it is that you want to manifest, the um, energy of want becomes bigger with the strength of the attachment or the cord, which is perhaps why we called on both Archangel Michael and Kali at the beginning of this reading. So like the, the cord is interwoven with the energy of want or desire or need or that thing is external to me it creates the fabric of a reality where that thing is not whatever it is that you're aiming for or manifesting is not already present so there's something in your manifestation visualizations where spirit is encouraging you right now to like think of it let it let it give you like pleasant pleasant thoughts and then let it go. Move on to the next thing. Let it. Let these things, these manifestations come to you in the moment. You don't have to spend, you know, minutes or hours or thousands upon thousands of affirmations to create that space in your mind. I think that quite often in manifestation, especially when we're in a flow state, just the allowing of something to come up and go, oh, that's nice, or that would be nice, and then let it go is far more powerful. Um, because it allows less time for our minds to sort of get in our own way. Um, and it opens the gateway for like this, this blessing um, for the universe to offer you. So the Six of Wands reverse to me is that energy of like needing to clear some stuff out of the heart space for these manifestations, especially if you've been disappointed in the past. Many, many, many of us have. And I think my Sagittarius Collective 
who I am reading for, you have experienced a lot of disappointment in the heart space in the past, whether it be from friends, family, or even yourself, you know, your kids, whatever it it is for you, even just the state of the world, like just looking around sometimes, I feel like you, you see the world sometimes and you're just like, why the fuck am I here? Um, I, that's what's coming through. And the Knight of Swords reverse is like, In your present energy, it's like you're holding your tongue. You're holding back the charge. You're not doing anything quickly. You're not saying anything quickly. You may be feeling a little bit lethargic even right now. You're also like, nobody is going to come save me. Nobody's going to jump in the freaking saddle and ride in like a knight in shining armor on a white horse. Like, no, I've got to be there for myself. And this being there for yourself, prioritizing yourself, is creating this incredible emotional stability in the energy of the King of Cups. Um, it could also be attracting in for you um, an emotionally stable partner, whether that be in business or in romance or both, um, and passion, a new passion new passion for you. This could be a new passion, like in terms of a a hobby, a career, or again, a person, maybe somebody you're really into. Um, I, <laughs> I was listening to who, oh my gosh, who is it? I want to say the channel name, Star Lordis Tarot this morning. And she calls this guy pajama man because it looks like he's in ridiculous pajamas. I thought that was the best thing ever. It made me laugh so hard. Pajama man. <laughs> She's awesome. Um, maybe check out her reading. If you don't generally listen to her, maybe this is just your sign to go like check <laughs> check it out. But oh, you um you might just be lounging. Or you might actually like meet somebody going shopping for pajamas. Like you might need a new set of pajamas or something. Um, that is never how I read this card. I was like, pajama man, what? And I was looking at this card just like, that is a cool reading for it. I'll probably never forget that. <clears throat> but still, you have your guard up. You have your passions alight, your wand ready to, like, create stuff, right? Manifest things. Um, you could be, like, an artist who goes through cycles of, like, creative um, bursts that sort of fade into, like, um, over, over analysis or analysis paralysis or, um, needing to just withdraw and, and be in your own space. And that's okay, right? We, we expend our energy, our prana, and then we rejuvenate. Um, and I think you're just finding ways to balance this, um, so that you don't have like big crashes with the two knights here, right? Uh, you're, you have a king in the middle who's the king of emotional stability. He can weather all the choppy waters. He's quite balanced. And he's been to the deepest depths. He knows how to come up out of the deep, deep, deep water without suffering a, an embolism, right? Like he knows how to adjust to the depths that he's in and the time it takes and, it, and the time it's required to like resurface or come into the shallows so you may have been through something that was really um it was deep you might have been in a relationship with somebody that was just you were deeply involved and it didn't work out and now you're sort of having a hard time adjusting to shallow encounters as well but i think that you're sort of holding your tongue looking around protecting yourself prioritizing yourself and just sort of testing the waters, seeing where people are at around you or like <sighs> what this offer, this business offer, or this offer of partnership could look like, you know, and, and you're, and you're in this energy because you've been disappointed of being like, Oh, that would be nice. And then letting it go. Right. You don't have that, that attachment anymore with the, expectation woven in of like this has to happen or this must happen or I'll only be happy if this happens like not that you were like that before necessarily it's just that there's a monkey mind part of our brains that's like 
obsessive or can be obsessive. It can get to this like, oh, I'm imagining my future and my vision board and this is what it's going to be. And I'm not dissing vision boards. I think vision boards are really great because they do exactly what we're talking about by promoting, they, they promote like a quick glance when you're walking out the door, right? This is my vision board. This is what it, and it, and it just puts that focus in the back of your brain all day um, subconsciously though, right? You're not like ruminating over it necessarily. You're not obsessing. You're just like, there's a reminder for my brain. And then your subconscious mind is incredibly powerful and it's um, 95% of our thoughts, right? And it's also, I think, what, how we connect to the unconscious, the collective unconscious, right? To spirit, to flow. So when we're setting reminders for our subconscious mind in tangible form, like things like vision boards, um, or even just writing down like affirmations on like whiteboards or whatever in our house, um, it creates these, these little like marking like posts for the path that your conscious mind is trying to inform your, your unconscious mind. Like, let's go here. It's like the unconscious has a much clearer understanding of how to get into the flow state and stay there. And the conscious mind's job a lot of the time is to like get in the way (laughs) so you're training your conscious mind to like to give these hints these breadcrumbs these like pathway markers to your unconscious and then you're trusting in that process trusting in the flow kind of like when einstein needed an answer to something and he took a nap right you're trusting your subconscious to connect you with a higher consciousness to connect you with the flow around you to harmonize with your environment um with the you've got the hierophant down here yeah this is your spiritual sort of like gift right now i was going to say with the full moon in sagittarius past last um thursday if you're watching this when i post it um i feel like i feel like you're stepping into like the like you're cutting all the cords right as the the moon wanes from your sign cutting all the cords to to ways of attaching to things that no longer work for you i'm getting like it's not a spider web it's like the high priestess card in the thoth tarot i'm going to show you if i can find it here i think it was maybe okay i'll just keep looking for it but it's like when we manifest right we're connected to a a web of light this cosmic web of light and i was telling somebody this in a reading the other day everything that we see is reflecting light back at us and what is not reflected back at us is absorbed into that material thing so what we're actually seeing is what the thing is not right And so, I don't know, this is something about your conscious brain and your unconscious brain. Like, what you're actually wishing for is what the thing is not with your conscious mind. But by planting it in your subconscious, like a seed in the darkness, what emerges is what you were hoping for. I think I've surpassed this um, high priestess card. Oh, here it is. Okay, awesome. So, the high priestess here, she's, this is literally, like, her spiritual body is resonating in all of these undulating frequencies throughout the universe and these are webs made of light and she's casting these vibrations on these light emanations into um, material form Um, everything in the world right is formulated initially by at least everything living is like formulated through like photons that come from stars to create life for here for us anyways on this planet right so it's like where you put the light where you put the light creates the material form but what what you get back is the the inverse somehow so this could have been like the nature of your manifestations previously like you're 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 learning something about the law of opposites your manifestations could have been the kinds of things before where you would like overthink it and then exactly the opposite of what you wish for would happen and you'd be like why is this happening spirit which is why you have the seven of pentacles and the six of 
wands reversed. Yes. Okay. And here you are with the wheel of fortune. Awesome. Your fortunes are changing. You were destined to experience these things because you needed to understand some sort of depth in the laws of energy and how it's transmuted through your physical form into the physical forms around you, into the material around you. You needed to also understand the extent of your energetic frequencies impact on your reality because it's powerful and if you were like given your gifts like full-fledged right off the bat without this understanding imagine what kinds of like inverses you may have um, manifested so you're getting to a point right now where you're like okay spirit I get it I'm getting this I'm getting the hang of this also why but I'm getting the hang of this thank you you're balancing out, yeah, stabilizing in the material, stabilizing in the emotional. Um, I get this sense that there's supposed to be another element here. Eight of Pentacles reverse, Ten of Pentacles reverse. There's something you need to master. Um, and now I'm being drawn to get um an oracle card i think it's no we're gonna use the guardian of the night tarot yeah here we go there's something you're being called to master that's not just this it's about yourself your stability your um again how you manifest in the material world now we have the queen of cups oh it's your receptivity oh you're very in your masculine energy i see okay um, I love this Queen of Cups card. Orcas are amazing. I just learned the other day that there's like a third species of orca. So there's the resident orcas and the transient orcas. And then there's this like third species they're calling the offshore orcas. They all have different ways of hunting, of living, of navigating in their social groups. And they also um, don't interbreed. Their species were separated on the evolutionary timeline 300,000 years ago so they're not even like the same so these would be resident orcas because they're eating salmon um the person who made this deck was based in seattle so something might resonate with you you might be in seattle or you might need to just take a trip there for some reason or um i don't know maybe you live somewhere really foggy or you're in Washington, um, you could be dealing with a cancer. But the Queen of Cups is all about compassion, especially compassion for herself. Um, at least the way I read her usually, she is all about looking back over the things that have happened to her, that ha that she has done, and seeing like the humanity in herself and others. Seeing that like we are all flawed and we are all beautiful and we are all divine and we are all worthy of love and success and happiness um where you're currently at you still aren't quite feeling that you're still not quite feeling like i'm worthy of love success happiness um i'm being drawn to read about this queen of cups for you there's probably some specific message in here or some wording that is significant to the Sagittarius that I'm reading for. When the Queen of Cups is present, she creates an energy within a situation that promotes unity and agreement. I was just thinking the resident orcas, they have bigger communities and they're smaller um, in stature and their teeth are smaller. They don't, they don't eat mammals. They only eat fish and they're on the endangered species list because they're competing with human beings. They also use echolocation to hunt, whereas the offshore orcas and the um, transient orcas don't because it gives away their position or their location. Um, they have very keen hearing, though. So the echolocation is standing out to me because this species is particular. This particular species uses echolocation to to find fish and there's something here about you sending out sound vibration and receiving back the picture of what is there right when an, when a whale sends out its echolocation its sound it what bounces back is what's reflecting off of the thing so it gets this picture of the fish that's there but it's also somehow like the inverse 
How interesting. A sounding board. It's almost like what you say to people with the Knight of Swords here. You know what people are absorbing based on what they say in response, based on what they give you in response. If what you're saying to somebody is responded to through like negativity, this is so weird. You know that it's weird for me. It's a weird message, but it might make perfect sense to you. And there's a literal rainbow in the sky right now for no reason. There's like a little cloud and there's a rainbow in the sky as I'm saying this to you. Um, whoa, I, I just got totally distracted. If they're responding negatively to what you're saying, you're aware that they've absorbed the positive like from you. and. And this is also telling me, like, this is a good indicator of who's an energy vampire. Like, if you give nothing but positivity to somebody or nothing but your very best and they can only come back with criticisms, that's a good indicator, right? That this person is leeching off your energy and that they need it in some way, shape or form from some source, but not you, right? Like, you're setting your boundaries here, but they are needing to connect, like, with the divine or a higher higher spiritual guidance. And with you being the Hierophant here, you might be stepping into some sort of destined awakening wherein you help people to understand just through the power of your actions, because your words are reversed here, right? Just through being there as like a reflector or like a sounding board <clears throat> or a grounding, you're grounding this energy, um, a ground for the electrical energy that moves through people, the photonic energy that moves through people. Um, you're, you're having some awakening that allows you to like help people into, I'm hearing like a platform or like a portal or a space where they're not needing to suction energy from others anymore. It's almost like you're a connector. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Thank you, Spirit. That was a really cool message to come through for my Sagittarius collective. When the Queen of Cups, oh, like a caring mother, she applies comfort and understanding. She knows when to talk and when it is best to simply be a shoulder to cry on. When the Queen of Cups is present, your situation will improve or benefit from expressing love and tuning into the emotions of those around you. It is time to step into this gentle Queen's shoes and put aside personal desires and focus on how those around you feel. Doing so will create harmony and promote a positive shift. The Queen of Cups is an energy that sends its, up, its power outward instead of drawing it in. The Queen focuses her efforts on healing others first, knowing she has more than enough emotional strength to share. Dive deep and feel the rhythm of the water around you. Can you feel its vibration? The Orca's energy focuses on creating peace within a family and being in tuned with those closest to you. When you connect with the Orca, you will find the strength to console others while remaining unsinkable. Giving your time and energy to others will not drain your life force as the Orca is present to ensure the healing you give flows in a circle, going out as it is restored within. Deep emotions, family, connection, and intuition. Oh, the Orca might be a spirit animal for you. They may come to you in your dreams. You might want to just learn about them. Maybe you're a marine biologist um, or maybe you're encountering like a new love of the animal kingdom or the oceanic kingdom. But certainly um, you're embracing a more emotional side and it's making you feel like this four of pentacles right now. Like just I'm just going to hang on to my own. I'm just going to stay stable. But spirit is reminding you that you have been through it and you've been through it more so than a lot of people around you. And you can hold this space. You can ground, you can ground this emotional stability, this compassion, and even these small new passions. I see you like holding this wand aloft and going around lighting people's torches, giving them a light to see by in the darkness. Wow, this is beautiful. 
Anything else for my Sagittarius collective, please? Spirit, thank you. The Five of Cups. Three of Wands. Wow. You're helping people transmute their emotional, like, resignation, I'm hearing, into their ships coming in. You're literally showing people how to, like, transmute their energy of grief, what's spilled, what's gone, and turn around and look at the two cups. Because I'm not saying that it's it's a bad thing at all to be in an energy of grief. In fact, I think we should give grief her due and and collectively respect the power of grief and the need to grieve and the, the time and the space that it requires to honor um, what has passed before we move on. I think it would um, offer a lot less mistakes um, in the future for us and for generations to come, right? There's something here about passing things on generationally as well because orcas learn from their family units and the mothers, their matriarchal units, the mothers pass this, the grandmothers pass it on to the, to the um, babies and the mothers hunt. Um, and then the mothers, of course, learn from their mothers. So something here about your mother potentially being either of help or some healing of a mother wound as well. And this could be a mother wound like with the earth, like how we connect with the earth. Um, but you are helping people to transmute through this grief, to look at grief, thank it, honor it, and then move on into a space of feeling like, okay, I've done that. I've given, I've given what has passed what it needed and the honor and the respect it deserves. And now when you turn around, it's like your ships are coming in, their ships are coming in. You're just... Yeah, you're lighting people's candles in this darkness. You're turning this golden desert perspective into a like golden afternoon ships coming in on a ocean harbor instead. Wow. Ten of Cups reverse. King of Pentacles reverse. I'm hearing, but first, but first me, but first stabilize, but first. But first, I think that you're transmitting a message to those around you that emotional care and self-sufficiency radiates out into material stability and that to ignore our emotional needs is to the detriment of our community as well as to our our practice, our self mastery, our family, our pentacles, right? Like you're you're helping to create a new sort of paradigm where the focus isn't on health, wealth, and happiness in terms of like getting the big house or getting the great job or getting the good car. Instead, you're like, no, health, wealth, and happiness are it, this is within. It's a it's an it's something that comes from within, from transmuting our pain, our grief and moving through our karma into a new dharma right like a new wheel of life a new new wheel of life and this is spiritual work and emotional work and the pentacles are like a reflection of our our internal stability our self-worth how we how we see ourselves and what it is we bring to others around us Whew, okay, I feel like that was sufficient. That was a good reading. Thank you, Sagittarius, so much for this reading. I hope it was helpful in some way, shape, or form. And if it was, please remember to like the video. I'll see you all next week.